going to run through a couple examples of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Remember, the concept of the second fundamental theorem is the idea that you have some kind of function, often written in terms of a different variable. And specifically, it is a function between, essentially a function that's an integral taken between some constant value and some variable value. Um, and a lot of times in the second fundamental theorem problems, you're going to be asked to find the integral, or sorry, you're going to be asked to find the derivative of an integral function. Uh, in a sense, you can just basically substitute in the variable that's one of the bounds and you get your derivative. Uh, if you think about it, if you take the derivative of an integral, you would expect to get just whatever that function was there. So in this case, for example, if I want to find f prime of x, technically the answer is really just going to be cosine of x. Uh, in other words, uh, that's going to be the variable I take there and it just gets substituted in. Now you look at that and you say, well, that's great, but you know, what's really going on here? Uh, what's really happening here, you can take that integral. There's absolutely nothing difficult about taking that integral. Uh, that integral is going to be sine of t, and you're going to be taking it between the bounds of 3 and x. Well, if you do that according to the regular fundamental theorem, you're going to substitute in the x, and you're going to subtract sine of 3. Now, keep in mind here, I didn't ask you to find the value of function f. I asked you to find the derivative of function f. So all I've done here is taken this function and write it into a different form. Uh, if I wanted to graph and see what it looked like, for example, I could graph this. I now need to find the derivative of that function. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of sine of x, which takes me back to cosine of x, which is why I end up getting the same thing that I had in the original function, except it's no longer in terms of t, it's in terms of x, because x was that value that I substituted in as one of the bounds. And then if you notice here, sine of 3 is a constant. So when I take the derivative of a constant, that derivative is just 0, and I'm just left with cosine of x. So the point is, technically you can just take, and it doesn't even matter, that could be a 1, that could be a 3, it could be a 2,000. The only thing that matters is this variable right here, and that's what I'm going to end up with. Um, if you take a look at the second example here, uh, now it's the integral from 1 to x squared of secant of t tangent of t dt. Well, once again, you could technically rewrite that function. f of x is going to be the integral, uh, so it's going to be the integral of secant of t tangent of t. That, of course, is just secant of t. And then I could go through and substitute from 1 to x squared, and I could see what I get. So, of course, according to the fundamental theorem, that's going to give me secant of x squared minus secant of 1. That's another way of writing function f. But they don't want me to find function f. They want me to find the derivative of function f. So f prime is going to be the derivative. Well, with secant of x squared, uh, normally the, the derivative of secant of x is secant x tangent x. So it's going to be secant of x squared times the tangent of x squared. However, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. Uh, and then the derivative of secant of 1 is just 0. So I'm just left with this. Uh, the point that this should remind you of is, according to the second fundamental theorem, um, yes, you're going to be substituting in this x squared in both of those two positions, as you can see down here. However, remember that if this boundary value has a derivative of an inside function that's anything other than 1, you are going to need to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So you can see that 2x secant of x squared tangent x squared here is my final answer. Okay, uh, moving on to part g. Okay, this is one uh, that's a little bit harder to take the integral of and substitute. Uh, but the point here is we know based on the, the previous problem, uh, it's just going to end up being the tangent, uh, the derivative, it's just going to be the tangent of 2x, but 2x has a derivative of an inside function of 2, so I have to multiply by that. So I get 2 tangent 2x, and that's my final answer there. So hopefully that doesn't look too bad. Now there's also a visual component of this. I want to take a look at a few examples of that. Uh, let's say they don't give you the 
the actual equation of a function and they just give you a graph. Well, keep in mind, um, f of x, for example, if that's defined as being the integral from, let's say, 2 to x of function h, and you can see function h is this function up here, that's saying I'm starting out at 2 and one view of an integral is the area under a curve between the two boundaries, uh, bounded by the x-axis and the curve between those two boundaries. Uh, so really I'm finding the area from 2 to whatever my value of x is uh, when I'm looking at this original function. Not the derivative, just what the original function is. So if you see down here, it asks me to find f of 2. Uh, f of 2 is just going from 2 to 2 of my original function t, and it's, of course, an integral. So I'm going from 2 to 2. Well, the area between 2 and 2 under this curve, of course, is just going to be 0 because there's no width in that. Uh, so that's my answer there on part A. On part B, it's uh, f of 4. That's going from 2 to 4 of h of t dt. And, of course, again, that's just the area between 2 and 4. Well, I can go to my graph. 2 is here. 4 is right here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is my area, and that's my value. Okay? Now, it asks me to find f prime of 3. Well, I know that the derivative, f prime of x, is going to be equal to um, basically function h of t times the derivative of the inside function, uh, which, of course, the inside function in this case is, I'm sorry, it's not going to be h of t, it's going to be h of x times the derivative of the inside function, which, of course, is just 1. Um, and so, in other words, all I'm doing here is uh, the derivative of the integral, if you want to think of it in that terms, the derivative of the integral is just going to be function h. So the point here is I'm really just finding h of 3 on my graph. Uh, I can go back up here. I go to 1, 2, 3. h of 3 has a value, a functional value of 3 here on the graph. So that's just 3. Uh, same thing with f prime of 0. Um, I'm just, the derivative of an integral function is just going to give me function h written in terms of x. Okay, so at 0, uh, h of 0 is just going to be equal to 0, and that's my missing value there. And uh, finally, at the end here, you'll see I have another function de defined from 1 to 2x. Notice that has a derivative of an inside function of 2 of h of t dt, and I want to find m of 2. Um, no, I don't. I want to find m prime of 2. Sorry, a little mistake there, setting that up. Um, so I want to find the derivative of this integral, okay? Now be careful. The derivative of the integral is just going to be h of 2x times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. And in this case, that's going to be my value of m prime, my derivative of my integral. Okay, it's just going to give me the function in terms of whatever that variable is multiplied by the derivative of the inside function of whatever that variable is. Um, so I can substitute in, I put in a 2 here, that's going to end up being h of 4. So I'm going to take 2 times the value of h of 4. I can go back to my graph. h of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, has a value of 3. So I'm taking 2 times 3, and I get a final answer of 6.